All right, I'm back. Um, I'm in a much better mood. Uh, I took a, basically a week off from working on the car. Um, I worked on the shifter a little bit, replaced it because it was in terrible shape. I did everything from selector rod joint, shaft seal, all the way up to the knob, all replaced, new bushings, everything. So maybe I'll make a video on that. I don't know. But um, I also did the oil lines. So I want to show you how I routed them because they're really, they really didn't talk much about how to route the lines. Um, and, uh, it took me a while to do it, not because it was hard, but because I wanted to make it, um, maintenance friendly and sensible, especially because it, these are just rubber hoses and they're pretty sensitive. So the, the first thing you do obviously is the reservoir, there's a bracket down there. Um, that's pretty easy to put on. There's just a, there's a screw, screw you just pop out and then another screw you just put in with the bracket. The bracket for me wasn't quite level. Um, so I had to bend it in a little bit. It's, it's actually still not quite level. I might actually buy one of those, um, like, like on the drill, you have the, the horizontal level. I might put that right here just to make sure, um, and leave it on there in case it starts to move around. But that's, that's where I started really. Um, and then before you hook anything up, definitely play with uh, location of the hoses. Um, you really want to make sure that you're happy with the routing before you start tightening this stuff down. A, because um, you want to make sure these are out of the way because these are probably going to be the hoses you mess with the least in the future as far as maintenance goes. Cause like the air hoses, you can just pop out and pop back in for whatever you got to do. But the oil lines, they're kind of a pain cause you got crush washers and you got, um, fluid and all this stuff to mess with. So you want to make sure that they're out of the way. Um, and then the second thing is you want to make sure that the maintenance part of it is pretty easy to get to like the filter. You won't have to change it too often or change it to oil too often, but you still want it to be, you know, easy to get to. So I actually started with the oil supply line. Um, I, I, like I said, don't don't connect anything first. Just route it first, just to make sure you're happy with where it is. Um, I actually messed this one up because it it runs over this little AC line. I should have run it under, um, but you can kind of see where it runs into the bottom of the reservoir. So it comes from the bottom of the reservoir out between the inner cooler and the oil cooler. I will zip tie it to the oil cooler because there are there are some holes in the bottom. I run it through there and then I go over to over the bumper mount and then down here is the filter I'm probably going to zip tie that out of the way or maybe get velcro or something just to keep it out of the way and then I go up behind the filter and then behind the charge or the supercharger charge pipe I also zip tied it here to keep it off the rails and then under here and up into the inlet the other thing I want to keep in mind is the clocking these aren't swivel joints so make sure when you're routing it you aren't having to bend it weirdly um, just to get it to line up. So make sure when you're routing it, the clocking of, of the connection is, is exactly how you want it. Um, and I did mention it briefly in the last segment, but yeah, make sure that when you're routing lines, don't let it rub weirdly. Um, make sure anything that's touching is like a nice round surface. Um, there's a couple spots where I'm a little worried about to do some adjustments, like right there on one of the return lines, it's rubbing right on um, kind of a sharper edge. So have something on hand like rubber or, or something um, like vacuum lines that you can cut and put on those sharp edges to act as a softener so that when you're driving around, it's not rubbing on the oil line and potentially causing a leak in the future. All right, so that was the uh, supply line. The return line comes out this side of the supercharger. Um, I've routed it, actually started on the front with it um, where it ties into here. I pushed it down through here. Um, I tried messing with it a few ways. I really wanted it to go up here, but you would have to cut your fan shroud, um, like a slot here and then a hole on this side for the line to route through. So you can either go up here or you can go under and kind of follow your supply line a little bit. Um, now this is my car. I don't know what my car has been through in the past. I don't know what's been cut, what's been removed. So your car might be different, but this is what worked for my car. Um, I, I pushed, I started the hose here. I routed it down all the way through until I got the AN fitting down there. 
Um, it is a little bit bent in an awkward position. I don't even know if you can see. Um, it's kind of dark. But I think it'll be okay. I think it's workable. So I pushed it down there. I routed it kind of around the supply line or following the supply line. But instead of going down past the filter, I went up over the bumper mount. And then you see it running through there. You go under the blow off valve return and under all the charge piping. And you keep pushing it and you kind of come in here and grab it and you ride it through here up to your um, discharge. So it'll we'll come from here around into your cooler, through your cooler, make sure your cooler is good. Don't let it be touching the auxiliary fan. And then this is the return to the, uh, to the reservoir. The reservoir return is pretty easy. It's actually really long. Um, so it's something, something similar. You can either go through here or to the bottom. I, on these two, you can't really, you can go up top maybe. I think the snorkel will actually get in the way. So you could probably cut this junk out if you wanted to, but this seems to work fine going down from the bottom. So I'll run it down. It goes down again. This time it goes between the intercooler and the, the bumper mount and then down and up and then through here. And I kind of routed it around the windshield washer reservoir and onto here. And that's it. It's pretty easy. Um, but like I said, make sure before you start crushing crush washers and filling fluid, make sure you're really happy with the line placement. Otherwise, you'll be annoyed that you'll have to start, you know, draining lines just to move stuff out of the way. Um, the last thing I, I want to mention uh, for this is the other thing I mentioned the uh, the rubbing and stuff. The other thing you really want to avoid are really really sharp bends. Um, so like down here with my filter, it's it's getting yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, I, it's probably workable, but. Uh, most of these hoses have like minimum bend radius requirements or I guess limitations uh, You really want to avoid because um, like you'll probably see if I left like this for I don't know three or four years, especially if I leave it out in the heat or something You'll see a lot of cracking back here um, So try your hardest to avoid, you know, really really sharp bends make everything really gradual be really gentle with it and um, You should be all right. I don't think that these require maintenance until I have to, what they said like every 20,000 miles maybe I don't remember what I said things in the in the road trash instructions but you shouldn't have to touch these so you want to make sure that they're in good shape for a long time because if this goes bad your supercharger is basically effed and that's how you write the hoses um the next thing I gotta do is uh is fill it and prime it and then what's left for me is the fuel system, fuel injectors and fuel pump, and then tune it and I should be done. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, kind of. I also forgot to mention, um, I probably won't prime the system until I get closer to startup. Um, Cause it does ask you to, uh, you know, turn it on and monitor it and do some revs and stuff. So I'll probably wait a little bit until I actually uh, prime it. So, I'll just leave it as it is for now. I'm just going to have a punch list of stuff to do. I mean, I did my brakes. I had to drain the power steering. Um, a couple other items. So I'll just have a small punch list of items to do when it comes closer time to start up.